Hey guys. Well, as you've probably already found out by now, uh, the Philippines just announced that the borders will be opened up for tourism for vaccinated uh, visitors uh, coming up here on February 10th, 2022. So that's the great news. And what I wanted to talk with you guys about today is um, uh, your expectations. Now, we're going to talk briefly, we're going to talk about two different types of visitors to the Philippines when it comes to expats. And the first group, uh, I'll, I'll just kind of talk about briefly here for a few minutes, and then we're going to majority focus on the second group. So the first group of expats, and you can figure out easily enough which group you fall into, uh, the first group of expats that will be returning to the Philippines are going to be guys that are in some form of a relationship already with a Filipina. Now, you may have, um, like, again, talking to you guys uh, and reading your posts on Facebook and stuff, many of you had already had about, say, a two-year relationship living in the Philippines with her, knowing her in person. You developed that relationship. And then, you know, nobody knew about COVID at the time. And so you, you went back to your home country, maybe to take care of some banking or medical issues, whatever. And then all of a sudden, bam, you're, you're cut off from getting back into the Philippines until February 10th. So you're in that position. And it's uh, been a struggle. But because you already established a relationship in person, you've been doing the LDR thing here for quite a while. And not being married, you weren't able to get back into the country based on a spousal visa with a 9A. So it, it, I, I realize it's been tough for you guys. I'm in the same boat. You know, I'm, I'm away from my girlfriend for right now. And uh, so uh, there's, there's that first group of guys who, again, you know, they've already got the, the physical in-person relationship established, but haven't been able to get back in. So now that you can get back in, of course, definitely you're going to want to avail of the, you know, the reopening of the border for vaxxed people and get back into the Philippines and pick up where you left off, um, you know, make a decision about marriage or not, but basically get back to your, your girlfriend, fiance. Uh, now there's another group of guys who, um, were, were caught outside of the Philippines post COVID and began, if you, and I use the term loosely, a uh, relationship where it's completely online. You've never met each other in person during the last two years. You've, you've communicated through video and all that. And I've discussed this, you know, in detail in many other videos, so I won't go in too much de de detail on that. But essentially, your first day of your real relationship begins when you get back to the Philippines and start spending a lot of time together. Uh, and I mean as much time as you can so that you're actually spending time with each other, not just when you're out having fun and going to resorts and whatever, but you're actually around each other in everyday sort of situations. Grocery shopping together, going to appointments together, uh, taking care of just whatever around town, you know, kind of like the non-typical non-date sort of events, you know, even cooking together, uh, things like that, you know, not, not the usual, again, you know, sort of what I call the Disneyland experience where you're just taking her all over to, to nice places. You can get along with just about anybody, uh, if, if you're just entertaining them all the time, you know, that's easy. Uh, the real relationship, uh, barometer is how do you do in everyday situations. So that's all I'm going to really say on that. But this other group of, of the first group, we're still talking about the first group, you're in a relationship that you've developed virtually online. And now that the borders are going to open up February 10th, you're again, you know, I encourage you get to the Philippines and start spending real physical personal, you know, in-person time with that Filipina that you've met online. And uh, I, I will say one thing about this. Kind of brace yourself because we mentally fill in the gaps of everything we don't know because, you know, doing the whole LDR thing on video. 
So be prepared for a recalibration when you get there. Because, you know, how somebody appears on video or the little segments they show you on video um, is different. It's the tip of the iceberg. But when you're with that person, all of a sudden, the whole chemistry thing starts to come into play. You may find that in person, you know, it, it, you got along great when you talked for, for 30 minutes on video, but in person, spending hours and hours the whole day with this person, you might realize, wow, we don't really, we, we just don't have a, a synchronicity going. We're, we, you know, we're not really symbiotic. We're, we're just, uh, you know, you might find that you're just not as compatible as you thought you were. And it's not that they're a bad person. It's just that you may find in person, you feel awkward and uncomfortable with them, like even after the initial week or whatever. So be prepared for that. Also be prepared that all this time that you've been doing the LDR, it's possible. Again, uh, the probabilities are case by case basis, but it's possible. It's in the realm of possibility that you get there and realize she's not a single Filipina. She might be married, you know, in which case maybe she meets with you, maybe she doesn't. Maybe her husband took off, you know, and she's been looking for a way to make ends meet. Uh, you may find that she told you she doesn't have any kids, and then now you realize she does have some kids. You may return and find that she's pregnant, you know, from some local Filipino guy. Uh, there's a lot of things that could have happened while you were a couple thousand miles away. So, you know, what I'm warning you against is do not fly over there with rose-colored glasses and dreams of rainbows and puppy dogs thinking, well, this is all going to be great. It can't be any other way. Well, in real life, again, you know, you, you just got to verify. You got to be ready to verify this stuff when you show up. Again, after February 10th, if you're vaccinated. So uh, now, so to both of these guys, whether you're engaged, have a girlfriend or a virtual only relationship with a Filipina, just go there prepared uh, to spend time with them in person, to really get to know them if you haven't met them in, you know, in person before. Just be prepared to do that. And I encourage you, get there as soon as you can and and spend time with them and figure out, figure out what it is you're going to do, you know, and, and figure out if that relationship really is what you're looking for. OK, so that's the first group. Now, the second group, <clears throat> second group of guys are those of you who either have never been to the Philippines or you have been to the Philippines back in 2019 and before, um, or you uh, are going to the Philippines and maybe you've chatted a few girls, you don't, you don't have anything solid going, no relationship, no virtual relationship, but you've been chatting maybe with three, four, five Filipinas. And so let's address this second group, okay? If you find yourself in that group, that you're returning to the Philippines or going for the first time, you don't have a girl waiting for you, you don't have a wife waiting for you, here's what I, I want to just ask you to consider and keep in mind before you book your ticket and fly over there. Again, so that you have realistic expectations, okay? Um, because this is going to be important. You know, otherwise you're going to be kicking yourself saying, why did I do this? Why did I spend all this money to get here? Now, the thing to keep in mind is that we're all very familiar through my videos and the videos of my buddies who are many of which are vloggers. You know, we've been sharing with you for years up until, again, March of 2020 when the whole COVID thing started. We've been sharing with you how great and how wonderful it is to live in the Philippines. Again, it's not for everybody. You know, some people just can't handle the humidity or the food or whatever. But, you know, it's not for everybody, but it's it's a fantastic life. It's been the greatest adventure I've done, you know, probably in the last two decades. But here's the thing. That, that lifestyle, that freedom of movement and, you know, happy-go-lucky, 
you know, you show up in the Philippines, you, you just plop into the nearest hotel if you want, or you grab an Airbnb, and then you dump your luggage, you go to the mall, and next thing you know, I mean, you know, in a few hours, you're, you're meeting some wonderful Filipina and sitting down to dinner with her. You know, um, that's how it was pre-COVID. And you just willy-nilly, if you hit it off with her, maybe she comes back to check out your pool at your place or whatever. And maybe you hit it off. And the next thing you know, you're like, hey, I'm, I'm going to Bohol. I'm going to Boracay. You want to go with me? Yeah, sure. And so she packs a little few things and off you go. You just... You just, you know, show up at the uh, airport or the ferry or what a bus or whatever, and you just jump on and, and there you are jet skiing at this other place and having a great time. That's how it was pre-COVID. Okay. What I'm here to tell you again, so that you temper your expectations, it's not like that right now. It will be, I believe, maybe later in the year after summer is my expectation after summer maybe around september or october things will start getting more towards that you know the 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 old normal if you want to call it that um and i have a few reasons i won't go into but it's good news i do see a lot of change i've been following a lot what's been going on worldwide with uh, the uk and canada and croatia and sweden the WHO and CDC are, are, again, there's good things happening there where the narrative is moving now more towards just loosening things back up again. So I would say that if you want to experience that type of Philippines, do not expect it to be that way till at least September, October. Okay, just think about that. Because I know a lot of you are like, wow, I can finally get in the Philippines. And you went straight to the airlines and you're checking out prices. You know, that's another thing is normally eh, for maybe eight, 800 bucks, you know, a thousand at most, you could jump on a plane from your home country, get a round trip ticket, head down to the Philippines for a month or whatever, and have a great time. And, you know, that was the going rate. Well, right now, um, some of the airlines are already selling out. You know, they're like sold out for a week or two after February 10th. And so you got to like schedule it out for later. And those of you who've been looking at tickets, you know, you, you guys have been sending me screenshots and stuff and posting on Facebook in the expats uh, in Asia the group that I have. And, you know, tickets are now up to $1,800 and that's not counting the taxes, you know, and fees and whatever. And the again, get a, re get a refundable or reschedulable ticket. Do not get a, a cheap, cheap ticket that if you don't get on that plane, even if it's because you tested positive for COVID, you're going to lose your money. Make sure you absolutely positively get that extra option to reschedule your flight should it become necessary, because you're going to have to get a negative COVID test within 48 hours of your departure time, not your arrival time. That doesn't matter doesn't matter how long it takes you to get to the Philippines. You have to have a negative COVID test 48 hours prior to your departure from your home country. So you won't know until two days prior to your flight whether they're going to let you on the plane or not. Because you may turn up positive. And you may turn up positive and you don't even have COVID. So get that, that rider, that extra option, pay for it. I've heard now it's gone up. It used to be 65, 85 bucks. Now I heard it's it's a lot more because you have to have it, you know, if you're sane, uh, unless you're just a gambler and you want to hope you come out negative on the test. So get that reschedulable uh, option. So when, uh, when you get to the Philippines, again, um, it's not like it was before. So when you get in the Philippines, say for instance, Cebu, expect that you will have to wear a mask. You you may have to wear the face shield in some parts of Cebu or Manila. The um, Here, like for instance, in California, maybe 40% of the people are wearing a mask, you know, and, and in one of the nearby cities, maybe 10% of the people are wearing a mask uh, here in my area. I'm sure it's different, different parts of the United States. But um, in the Philippines, they are adamant. They are adamant. You are not getting into the mall 
unless you're vaccinated. You're not getting in the mall unless you wear a mask. And in, in when I last left, uh, back in April of last year, you're not getting in the mall if you, if you don't have the full face shield as well as the mask. Okay, so, uh, and then you're going to have to sign in your name and your phone number and your contact on a slip of paper to get in the mall. And then once you're in the mall, let's say you want to walk into the Burger King and get a burger, you got to fill out that little form again. Now that's how it was in April. I don't know that they've relaxed that much, you know, since then. Uh, again, this is the Philippines. Thing, you know, change is pretty slow, really, when you think about it. Um, and implementing those changes. So expect that, that, you know, every girl you see is going to have a mask on, <laughs> okay? That's going to kind of impede your usual, you know, assessment of which girl you're going to talk to. You're just going to have to imagine what she looks like without a mask or invite her to, to dinner or lunch because then you can take off the mask while you're eating. Then you can have an idea of who you're really talking to. Um, so the requirements are one thing to consider. Freedom of movement is another thing. Like I said, pre-COVID, you know, you just jump in a taxi and go to the next city or jump on a bus and go to the next island, whatever. You know, you can you can go across the ferry on the bus and whatever. Uh, nowadays, um, there is a policy they have, which is no vax, no ride. Now, fortunately, that is short-lived. They are actually going to get rid of that here coming up in, I believe, the first week of February. So by the time you get there, that should be uh, deactivated, the no vax, no ride thing. So that's one piece of good news. But um, aside from freedom of movement, because see, you say you're in Cebu and you want to go meet a girl in Iloilo. Normally you would just catch a flight or take the ferry and off you go. Um, you're going to have to consider, they may ask you to get a, a, a signature from your local barangay office. Uh, back when V wanted to go from Cebu to, to uh, Davao, uh, we had to go to two different offices, actually three altogether, counting the one in, in Davao, to get signatures from three different barangay offices just so that she could get on the plane. You know, So uh, again, these are policies that are going to be more and more unnecessary but but how how quickly they repeal them is another matter. You know, by the time they say this is no longer needed and the time that the local barangay gets that memo, there's going to be a slow transition. So expect that. You may have to do some paperwork uh, to move from island to island. Okay, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, next thing to keep in mind is, uh, again, the whole dating thing. And by dating, I'm, I'm referring most, not too much, there's relationship dating, where you date the same girl over and over to get to know her. And then there's recreational dating. You just want some company, you know, for the weekend. Now, I know a lot of guys are into this. I've done that. I've, I've met girls that I just knew they were just not marriage material, but hey, they're fun to hang out with. They're really pretty and they're, you know, just fun to hang out with for the day or two. Now, uh, for you guys that are planning to do this, it's like, hey, now I can finally go to the Philippines, start meeting all these Filipinas and, you know, go hit some Jollibee and then take them back to the pool or whatever. Um, realize that when you book your hotel or if you're going to do an Airbnb in a condo before when you would bring a Filipina to your condo, normally, even pre-COVID, Many of the condos would ask her to leave an ID with the security guard. That way, if there's any problems, you know, they know who to look for, you know. So if she trashes your apartment or a fight breaks out or whatever, they know who they're dealing with. She can't just run out the door and disappear, okay. And that was pre-COVID. Well, now, ever since COVID, uh, again, April of last year, uh, when I left, they had signs on the door that basically said, no guests, no guests, you know, and, and you, you can argue all you want. Well, hey, I paid for this place. I'm renting it. I can have guests all I want. You know, that's my right. You can say that all you want, but the condo or the hotel, if they say, if they have a no guest policy, and many of them do, then you don't get to bring anybody into your place. You know, if you even if you have, say, a six-month lease at a condo, 
their policy back, like say it's Solania, was, you know, the Filipina that you bring in the door in order for her to get past security to go into your place has to be written. Her name has to be on the lease. In other words, she's like your girlfriend or your wife, your significant other who is on the lease. Okay. Otherwise they would not let her in. Nobody, basically the way they had it set up, unless you're on a lease for an apartment, you don't go in the building, you know? So, so recognize that same thing with the hotels, uh, Red Planet, they had, you know, when I checked in there, they, they told me the whole policy and they said, no, no guests. You cannot, just so you understand, you know, nobody goes in this room except you, you know? So now some of the hotels, like, uh, I, I think it's called Castle Peak. I think that's the one. Um, and then also there was another one cause I stayed at like probably five or six different places during that whole debacle of being sick and, you know, trying to get out of the Philippines. And, but anyways, another policy some of them had was you could have a guest, but she had to have a recent antigen test showing that she possessed antigens either because she was vaccinated or because she had gotten COVID and gotten over it normally, organically. So they would let you bring a guest, but you, she has to present to them a current antigen test. And those are about $20, you know, and it only takes like an hour or so. Um, you know, cause I got one before I was going to take my flight thinking that was it, but actually the airport didn't want an antigen test. They wanted a PCR test. So that was wasted money. But, um, so some of the places will have a policy that they will let you have some random guests that you met in town, but she has to possess an antigen test at the very minimum, you know, uh, I don't think any of them were asking for a PCR test and those are like 80 to $90. Uh, you know, again, you're not going to just meet some girl at the Jollibee and then take her to go to get a PCR test for $90 just so you can, you know, have her come to your, your condo and make you a sandwich or whatever. Um, so, so the antigen test is about $20. So, now, again, I know what you guys, some of you guys are thinking that are familiar with the Philippines is there are the quickie hotels, you know, uh, Soho and uh, some of the others that, and, and they're on, they're on different islands, depends how big the island is, but just about every island has a quickie hotel somewhere nearby. And, uh, and they tend to turn a little bit of a blind eye. But if you're looking to date like a relationship you know, like you meet some girl in the mall and you're like, wow, I really want to get to know this girl. I really want to spend time, you know, getting to, to, I mean, it's like, wow, she could actually be girlfriend marriage material. Um, you don't want to be dragging her to a quickie hotel. So just realize it's not like it was pre COVID. That's the main thing I want you to get out of all this. It's not like it was pre COVID. Yes. You'll be in the Philippines. Yes, you can meet Filipinas. Yes, you can spend time with them in person at the mall. But you may or may not be able to bring them back to your hotel so you can kick back to do Netflix and chill. Okay? So just go there understanding that. Again, like I started in the beginning, I do believe probably September, October, It'll just be like, okay, we're all done with the COVID regulations. No more six feet apart. No more masks. No more face shields. Bring whoever you want to your hotel or your condo or your apartment. You know, maybe after September, it'll be back to that. But right now, in it's late January or actually almost early February. I mean, you know, and you're not going to be there till February 10th. Uh, so let's just say month of February and onward. Uh, a lot of the old COVID regulations are still in place and that's going to affect. Now, if you're going there, obviously you're vaccinated because that's who they're letting in. Um, just recognize every time you go to a restaurant, to the mall, to the supermarket, you're going to need to show your proof of vaccination. You know, now they want that in addition. So uh, just some things to consider. Again, uh, I want you to go, if you're going to go to the Philippines, I'm not discouraging you from going. I'm just saying, as you go to the Philippines, understand it's not the willy-nilly, 
you know, just free Wild West that it was pre-COVID. The regulations are, it's going to take them a while to drop them. And, you know, and then people have asked me, they said, oh, have you been to Boracay? Well, yeah, I, I was in Boracay back in 2000, 2013 and stayed a week there. And they were like, well, when are you going back to Boracay? Well, my answer to that is I'm going to go back to Boracay and take V with me when we don't have to look at Boracay through a plastic face shield. You know, I want to go there like I did last time and and just kick off my flip-flops and run in the ocean and not worry about violating two, three, or four different rules, you know, and get kicked off the beach, you know, because, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm like spreading COVID to the sea otters or something. I don't know. Um, so uh, just realize there will be regulations and limitations uh, for now. I do hope to see those regulations drop, hopefully by September, October. Um, so I encourage you guys, go solidify those relationships in person. Uh, be ready for some recalibration on who you thought they were in your head versus who they really are in person. Um, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. That's okay. You know, finding the right person for you long term is a process. You're not going to you're not going to find the right person on the first or second try. We should all know that. So just go there with an open mind and again, solidify those relationships, gauge them accordingly. If it's just not for you, say, hey, you know, it's been great knowing you, but this isn't this isn't going to work, you know. Um, and then just move on, you know, and, and be open minded to meeting somebody else. Um, or if it does work out, then fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. So I love to hear your comments, uh, any links, any, uh, relatable links, uh, you know, to, with all of this that you want to post, go ahead and put them there in the comments and I'll see you there. Okay. We'll talk about something else next time. Okay. See you then. Bye-bye. Hey, if you enjoyed the content, uh, be sure to subscribe and get notifications for new stuff. Also check out my community tab where you can get updated news on stuff going on in Southeast Asia. All right, catch you later. Bye-bye.